I'm Amy Harwood and I'm a freelance illustrator and today I'm going to show you how to create your own illustrative border. Grab any art materials you've got lying around and let's begin. Cool, so I'm going to be using gouache paints today. They're kind of similar to watercolour paints so if you've got that that's great. Uh, I've got a cup of water for mixing the paint, a pencil to sketch the outline but feel free to go straight onto the paper like I'm about to. Um, it's a bit more experimental and fun that way. And a combination of paint brushes to experiment with mark making, but if you've only got one, that's totally cool. Here are the paints that I'm going to be using. I've got the primary colours, which is blue, red and yellow, and the black and white. So we'll be doing colours first, and then at the very end I do black for all the dark bits to kind of make the colour pop, and then we go straight on top with white to add the highlights. Here's my palette. It's extremely dirty, but you know, the good thing about gouache paints is um, if you leave them to dry, you can add water later and it will still come back to life. If you don't have a palette at home, um, any ceramic plate, plate will do. Um, they should wash off quite well, but maybe just in case, use a plate that you don't mind ruining. So we're going to start by mixing a couple of greens and you do that with your blue and yellow. If you're using a combination of paint brushes, use the biggest one that you have at this stage. Once you've mixed the colour that you like, we're going to add lots and lots of water to it to create a wash. The paint should be nice and thin and it will add a nice translucent effect to our first layer. We'll begin our margin by painting the largest elements first and in this case it will be the big leaves and you can paint straight onto your paper like I am for more of an experimental take or I have uploaded a template you can sketch from if you prefer. This paint is a bit thick so I've added a bit more water and that's created the wash effect that we're after. So as you can see the paint is a lot more runny and it glides a lot nicer on the paper creating a more watercolour effect. When the layer dries you get that really nice textured watercolour look and it's really nice to paint over the top as well which is what we'll do at the later stage. Once you've gone round once with your margin we're going to go round again with the different types of leaves using the smaller brush and this is where you can experiment with different types of shapes, practice on another piece of paper if you'd like and you can paint on top of the leaves that you've already painted as well to create more of a textured look. Once you've finished that round, we'll go around again and fill in the remaining gaps with smaller leaves. So again, you can do whatever shape leaf you like. I'm just going to do some expressive brush strokes and it's just a nice fun way of filling in the gaps.
we're going to go over with a thicker gouache which means we add less water than we did before and we're going to make a darker green by adding blacks and blues and what I like to do is to draw one line through the middle and then lots of little lines to come off the centre and you want to add enough water to the paint so that it glides onto the paper nice and easily if you find that it's bumpy or scruffy then add a little bit more water to the mixture Once you've finished that layer, we're going to fill in the gaps with flowers and you can use whatever colours you like. I'm going to go in with a nice pink and if you're using gouache paints you want it the same consistency as the green paint that you just used. And what we're going to do is find all the little spare spaces in between the leaves. And what I like to do is to work in sets of three. I find it makes like a nice layout and it fills the gaps nicely. And we're just going to continue around most of the spaces between the leaves in our little sets of three. It's good to have varying sizes as well, so you can go from having big flowers to tiny flowers. So once you're done you'll have something that looks like this. So a nice layer of varying sizes of flowers and we're going to do what we did with the leaves and go over on top with a darker colour to add a little bit of detail. I would personally use a darker version of the colour you just used, um, however feel free to experiment with different colours. You can have as many different colour flowers as you like. So I'm just going to make a darker red. And what I like to do is to make little threes, so it adds a kind of detail on top to make it look like little petals. So one little three, so you can do a backwards three or a normal three. And that gives the hint of petals, kind of like little roses. For the super tiny flowers, just a little speckle will do and add that detail that you need. And for even more coverage, if you grab your black or a super dark colour, you can add speckles that look like tiny leaves. And you can do that in your sets of three as well. And that's just another way of filling in the margin.
if you've made any mistakes along the way, like I have here, um, we can paint over that no problem with the white gouache. And we're going to use this technique to add the highlights on top of all the flowers and leaves. And there's your illustrated border. You can add a message in the middle or just use it as it is as a print. Thank you very much for joining me. Have fun!